What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic, and whenever I talk to anyone who is interested in starting a YouTube channel, the first thing they ask me is what equipment they need to get started, and for some reason people think you have to spend a lot of money. So if you haven't already watched it, I talked a little bit about this in the 100,000 subscribers video along with a few other tips, but in this video I want to talk specifically about equipment, so stay tuned. So today's video is sponsored by Micro Center, which is no doubt my favorite tech store. Micro Center sells all sorts of tech gadgets, computers, and professional equipment, and most of the items that I'll be mentioning in today's video are available in the store, so be sure to check out the links in the video description or take a trip to the store if you have one nearby. And what's really awesome is that Micro Center was nice enough to give us some coupon codes for a free 32 gigabyte flash drive and a free 32 gigabyte micro SD card. So be sure to check the links in the video description so you don't miss out. So I'm gonna break this video down into a few categories, but the first thing you should know if you're just starting out is that depending on the type of videos you're making, it's usually best to use the equipment you already have. And the reason I say this is because your content is more important than your video quality. In other words, if your video sucks, nobody cares how good it looks. Now don't get me wrong, video quality does matter, but high quality video isn't more important than making something people wanna watch. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about equipment. So first I wanna talk about lighting. Now this is one of the most important things when it comes to video quality. Bad lighting can be the difference between a terrible grainy looking video and a nice and sharp video. This can be as simple as using natural sunlight from an open window or even shooting outside. Now lighting can get really technical, but without getting too deep into it, I'll quickly explain three point lighting since that's what most people use for video. So this consists of a key light, which is your main light, a fill light, which is usually used for the other side of your face, and sometimes a backlight, which can either face your back or your background. So when I first started out on YouTube, I shot my videos using two softboxes and an umbrella light in the back of the room as a background light. The benefit of softboxes is that they provide a lot of soft, even light, and they're relatively inexpensive. And what's really cool about softboxes is that you can use a grid on the front of them, which directs all of the light directly onto your subject and away from your background. So the light I'm using right now is a Godox SL60, which is an LED video light, and I have a large softbox along with a grid attached to it. And for my fill light, I'm using an Elgato key light, which is filling the right side of my face right now. So the Elgato key light is what's known as an LED video light panel. It's basically a bunch of LEDs shining out of a flat surface. And as you can see, the Elgato does have a diffuser and this helps soften the light, but there are some situations where you want harsh light and that's where you would wanna get an LED video panel that doesn't have a diffuser built in. So these work great for a number of situations, especially gaming channels, since they can sit right on your desk and don't take up a lot of space. Now, even though I mentioned the key light as a background light, I honestly don't use it for much video since I have the LED light strips behind me. So LED strips are really easy to set up and they can add a nice effect to your videos. So you can use something like Philips Hue light strips for this, which are great since you can control them from your phone and easily adjust the brightness to match your video. And speaking of LED lights, the last thing I wanna talk about is ring lights. So ring lights have become really popular over the last few years and they work great for beauty and makeup videos. So for reference, this is what a ring light looks like. So I'm using a 17 inch ring light and I have the camera positioned in the middle. So ring lights are really convenient considering it's basically a big circle so you can put the camera right in the middle. And right now I have my Sony a7 III and the Rode Video Mic Go on top of the camera. So it's a perfect setup if you just want something that's really nice and compact. And this ring light is pretty cool. It has a mount for your phone if you wanna use your phone to record. It has a mirror so you can easily see yourself. It has different color modes for soft white, daylight, or somewhere in the middle. It has a USB port and you can even adjust the brightness. All right, so enough about lighting. Let's move on to the topic that might be one of the most important, which is sound. So sound is one of those things that can range from $20 all the way into the thousands. So choosing sound equipment really depends on what type of videos you're shooting. And there are three different types of microphones that I recommend for YouTube videos. You've got a lapel mic, a shotgun mic, and a studio mic. So the first microphone I wanna talk about is the shotgun mic. So a shotgun mic is a tubular microphone that can be positioned directly on top of the camera or it can be positioned above your head, which is often referred to as a boom mic. 
So I'm using a 48 inch microphone arm to position the microphone above my head right now. And mounted on this arm is a Sennheiser ME66 shotgun mic, which I use for most of my videos. Now this Sennheiser is meant to be boomed, but I do own a few shotgun mics that mount directly on top of the camera. This includes the Rode Video Micro, which is a really nice compact shotgun mic that works great for cell phones. And I also have the Rode Video Mic Go. So right now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go. Now I have moved the camera a lot closer to me so you can get a better idea of how this microphone sounds. So right now the camera is about three feet away and the microphone is sitting directly on top of it. Now the good thing about these kinds of shotgun mics is that they're really great for new YouTubers since they can plug directly into your camera. They're not really that expensive and they work really well. And this brings me to my next point. So the major difference between a shotgun mic that mounts on top of your camera and one that mounts overhead is that the overhead boom mics are usually going to require an XLR connection. So this means you're going to need some sort of recorder or interface that has XLR. So you might have noticed the red box behind me in all of my videos. Well, this is the Red Scarlet, which is a digital interface that allows me to convert the sound from XLR to a digital signal that a computer can understand. I also use a Zoom H4n recorder, which is what I have the Sennheiser microphone connected to right now. So the H4n is a great recorder since it has both XLR and stereo inputs. It's portable and works great for pretty much any mic. All right, the next microphone type I want to talk about is the lapel mic, also known as a lavalier mic. So a lapel mic clips onto your shirt, usually near your chest. And this is one of the cheapest and most effective options if you work in a number of situations such as interviews, mobile videos, or noisy environments. So right now I'm using the Rode Wireless Go, which is a $200 wireless lapel that works great if you want to avoid an external recorder. So this doesn't have any wires and the receiver plugs directly into the camera, which is nice and convenient if your camera has a microphone jack. And this even has a microphone jack if you want to connect another microphone to it and make it wireless. Now I know this looks weird clamped onto my shirt, so of course it works a little better when you have a shirt with buttons. And a cheaper alternative and also one of my favorites is the JK Mic J44, which costs less than $30. Now this is a wired lapel microphone, but the sound you get from this thing for 30 bucks is hard to beat. And the last type of microphone I want to talk about is the studio mic. So this is one of the most popular options among YouTubers, podcasts, and radio hosts. Now there are several different types of studio mics, but they're usually mounted on an adjustable arm that's clamped to a desk or table, and they're positioned very close to your mouth. Now most studio mics use an XLR connection, which is what I'm using right now with the Zoom H4n, but this microphone also has a USB connection, which is great for YouTubers since you don't need a digital interface. So this is the Shure MV7, which is basically a USB version of the popular Shure SM7B. It even has touch controls right on top of the microphone, which will be awesome for live streamers. Now, of course, one thing to keep in mind about studio mics is that they will be visible in your video, as you can see. Now, I personally don't want people to see microphones in my video, so I prefer a shotgun mic. All right, the last major component I want to talk about is cameras. Now, honestly, this topic could have its own dedicated video, but I'm going to try to keep it short. Now, as I've said before, when you're first starting out, it's best to use your phone to record your videos. You can even pair your phone up with a pair of soft boxes, a video micro, and a nice phone stand and have some good looking video. So right now I'm recording this on the Samsung Galaxy S7 Ultra and for audio I'm using the Rode Video Micro. So I'm gonna go back and forth so you can see the difference in sound using the internal microphone on your phone versus a dedicated shotgun microphone. Now the reason I'm shooting this video is to prove that you can get decent video out of your phone as long as you have some decent lighting. So instead of dumping a ton of money into a DSLR when you're first starting out, it's best to put that money towards some decent lights. Now, just like microphones, cameras can range from less than $100 all the way into the hundreds of thousands. And I've found that you generally get the best bang for your buck from a mirrorless DSLR. They usually have great features such as 4K video, image stabilization, and they're usually smaller and lighter than a full-size DSLR. Some good options include the Sony ZV-1, Canon M50, Sony A6600, and the list goes on and on. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the camera you choose also depends on the type of videos you're making. So if you're doing nature or hiking videos, then you might benefit from a GoPro or another small action camera. And if you need something super lightweight that's handheld, then you could go with something like the DJI Osmo Pocket. 
Now, I personally use a Sony a7 III, which is a full frame mirrorless camera. I love the image quality and the lens options with this camera, but considering the $2,000 price tag, it is a pretty big investment, and that's before you even start investing in lenses. Either way, as I said before, just make sure you do some research on the best camera to use for your type of videos. All right, so that's gonna pretty much be it for the main items you need, but there are a few accessories I use that are helpful. So for example, I have a few LCD monitors that I use to see myself since the a7 III doesn't have a flip screen. And this one even takes a Sony MPF battery so you can use it on the go. And of course you're gonna need a decent computer monitor to edit your videos. So since I shoot in 4K, I have a nice 32 inch 4K BenQ monitor that I use for all of my video editing. And I have another one that I use for gaming. And finally, when it comes down to sound, you'll either need a good set of studio monitors or headphones. So the studio monitors that I use are the JBL LSR 308s, which are actually one of my very first YouTube videos I did a few years ago. These are great for editing and they also sound good for casual music listening. And the headphones that I use for editing are the super popular Audio-Technica M50Xs. These have a nice and flat sound and work great for sound editing. Now, unfortunately, I don't have time to talk about every single thing that I use for making YouTube videos, but I will put a list of everything in the video description for those of you who are interested. And I wanna thank Micro Center for sponsoring today's video. Again, most of the items that you've seen in this video are available at the store along with a ton of other cool stuff. And if you've never heard of Micro Center, I will put a link in the video description to my tour of the store, but that's gonna pretty much do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.